If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. This conversation I was really excited about because... Um, I love when, you know, we get someone like Jordan inside the studio and we decide, okay, we're not going to talk about anything that I think anyone would expect us to talk about. Yeah. like I, it's, I love it's, those conversations. It's like supposed to be like obvious that we're going to talk about powerlifting or like, you know, something along those lines. And we don't even talk about that at all. In fact. Right. It so was, if this is a our, totally different direction. If this is one of our audiences that, or this is one of our people that listen to the show and they just, they don't like when we don't talk about health and fitness. Like this probably isn't the episode for you. <laughs> we talk so, about a lot of stuff though. We know we get into, yeah. so I thought we had some great no, it was conversation. just a fun conversation. Yeah. Right. That Which I, so because Jordan is a very intelligent person, I just like to have conversations outside of the stuff I already know he's really intelligent. Like normally when you meet somebody who's smart, they're not just smart in their one little field. Although that is that you do mm-hmm. see that sometimes. But Jordan's not that guy. He's a definitely a very intelligent, well-read guy. And it's uh, fun to speculate with him. We did some speculating in this one. We talked about a little bit of some conspiracies and ideas. Yeah. Talked a lot about business. Talked about Stanford. What else did we get into with Jordan? I don't remember. He looks bigger. Yeah. Did he look bigger he to you guys? Bigger, Fuck, yeah. I'm sure he Jordan's put, put on more on, weight these damn, days. Damn, he's, he's like he's a moose. Lifting yeah. houses. He's yeah. like a mini moose. Yeah. He is. You know? We did some good videos with him too when he came in to record. Actually, those should be up on on YouTube. If they are. They're up once now. they're listening. Yeah, yeah, they're already up. They're up. And, and uh, he he breaks shit down very very well in his videos. Yeah. Um, if you're a technical lifter and you want to learn all the intricate details, that yeah, a lot of his video. stuff. He did a video. And in fact, I've, I introed the video and had to preface it with, you know, this is definitely advanced. This isn't for everybody. He's teach like he was teaching a Jefferson curl and he was teaching a you know, a uh, bent over row with a rounded back. So Mm -hmm. definitely some advanced maneuvers that have lots of benefits. And he breaks down the benefits to that uh, in the videos. But I I caution most people that if you're a beginner, uh, there's some other places that you want to start with before you start getting uh, getting advanced like that. That's right. right. So Dr. Jordan Shallow, he is a podcast host. Uh, His podcast is called RX Radio. That's the letter R, the letter X, apostrophe D, radio. His uh, website is www.pre-script.com. And on Instagram, you can find him at the muscle doc. That's underscore in uh, between all of those. Um, also, I want to mention a uh, program. Now, if you're, if you're a fan of Dr. Jordan Shallow, you probably like him for his biomechanics. You like him for the technical stuff he talks about. Um, I'd like to mention our correctional exercise series, the Prime Bundle, which includes... MAPS Prime Pro, which focuses on the wrists, the neck, the shoulders, the shoulder blades, the ankles, the feet, the hips, uh, the spine, and MAPS Prime, which is a program that does, that is designed to teach you how to prime your workouts better so you get more out of your workouts. You can find all of those at mindpumpmedia.com. And without any further ado, here we are interviewing Dr. Jordan Shallow. I was excited to get you in here since you've been touring now. You've actually, you guys' podcast has taken off. You're doing well, getting all kinds of people on your show. And without naming names, what are some of the common things that you're noticing with all these people that you're talking to? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I think so far we've been lucky because we've had the people I've interviewed, there's been some sort of vetting process, whether it be personal or through you guys, like hooking us up with, you know, uh, some of the podcasts in SoCal. And it's like having that personal recommendation goes a long way. But being inundated into, and again, very much on the fringe of this, because uh, Jordan and I are just kind of, I mean, we're 47 episodes in as of this morning. Mm. You definitely start to see see podcasting culture separating <laughs> itself out as its own entity. Yeah. Uh, like me and Taylor were talking about it Interesting. outside. Yeah, well, it's just like, I mean, you can see very distinct lines and maybe personality uh, between like YouTubers and like Instagram mm-hmm. famous people, but podcasting is really carving out its own demographic of of not not just people like age between this and this or whatever, but mindset. Like it's almost becoming like a sect where if you listen to podcasts, you're of of this influence politically, or you prefer this mm. diet choice over this, or you train this way. Tribalism, dude. You know it is, and it, I mean it's it's the display of human nature in a different arena. That's all it is. I just, it's really interesting to me. What's the stereotype of the podcaster? <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> so, how, what are you doing to me? No, it's, yeah. it's okay. It's no, all, it's, it's just, all I mean, we just want to see if we think the same. Sure. I just think for me, it's <laughs> it, everything is a religion based off what you're passionate yeah. about. Right. So it's like, 
who's at the top and well it's easy go to itunes it's like who's your god essentially Mm -hmm. and it's like Ah, so how do you do it? Yeah, no, it's just, I, I think, <laughs> well, let's, I mean, let's, you, you the podcasting see. culture, I think to me is, it, it, well, let's look at the demographic. I mean, it's a very small percentage and it's rising and as it will, as I think it's a very content driven medium, right? Where mm-hmm. it's like, we talked about this, YouTube can be really precarious because it's, you know, it's, it's jump cuts, it's, it's thumbnails, it's rankings, it's algorithms, it's yeah. tags where it's like with mm-hmm. podcasting by and large, it's the base production value that it takes to be audible in a car mm-hmm. is I think much more attainable than that of, you know, fi- both financially and technically than YouTube or Instagram, right? Like, right. you know, you got to work out like portrait lenses and like nifty fifties versus this DSLR and this, and this shutter speed and ISO and all right. this. It's like, get a mic. You could do it in your phone really. And I'm sure some people so, do. So you can actually look up statistics on, uh, you know, the average podcast listener and all so podcast listeners tend to be more affluent and tend to be more intelligent and sure. higher educated yeah. than other mediums. But podcasters, a lot of nerds. Yeah. yeah. A lot of yeah. nerds do totally. like interesting. Like we, we meet a lot of podcasters and they're all so far like kind of intelligent, uh, socially awkward, a lot yeah, of social awkwardness totally. we've noticed. Um, it's, and it's almost like you're right. Like you start to develop the stereotype because you've met you, once you've yeah. met so many of them, you start to see. You just you, that's how your brain handles things. Yeah. It just categorizes like, okay, this was like this one. It's on. Yeah, it's not. It's not a stereotype if it's true, right? Like if a trend. <laughs> like if I walk into a room and I'm the only white guy there, I'm gonna notice that. Like I'm not <laughs> being a stereotype. I'm being mildly observant of my surroundings. <laughs> so for me, like podcasting culture. Uh, it's weird. One thing that's really coming up, and I think podcasting is driving a lot of this or the culture surrounded that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. When did this become yeah. like the men's yoga class? And, like nothing against it. Cause I guarantee you these guys <laughs> bro, could absolutely you know dust why? me. Cause Oprah does it, bro. The is, Oprah, it, is it Oprah? Oprah no, it's, 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 see, I it's, think it's, it's Rogan. That's, what, that's the Oprah. Oh, oh I see what you did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's you like, and me. that's, yeah. I think if we look to our deities to the, that's I mean, funny. the top of the download charts that the, the, the good word is going to percolate down from. You got Rogan, and in the Bay Area, Ferris I think is more yeah. widely resonated as far as like yeah, Ferris, Asprey, Rogan I feel like are influencing yeah. a lot of people. Sure. Well, well, well how else would a depri- deprivation chamber has been popular? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, jujitsu is if you're gonna if, okay, if you want to learn how to fight, but you wanna you don't want to like hit each other, and yeah. you don't want it, and you want to be smart quote unquote smart sure. about it that's jujitsu well dude it's i like, think it's, it's on like, the up mm, yes well if you look at the cte testing they're coming up with now yeah. like that guy with like, concussion testing without having to exhume the brain like posthumously yeah dude the ufc is gonna have to make a hard pivot mm. because it's like yeah boxing sure you i think boxing's too inundated into the 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 boys club culture mm-hmm. that there's too many guys that are gonna want to sit around smoke cigars watch ring girls and watch guys kick the shit out of each other and i think boxing is in is an institution where UFC, you know, Fox bought it. Now there's one every fucking weekend where maybe it was a little bit different when your your data sets were coming from four fights a year mm-hmm. and not a fight every weekend. And now all of a sudden these guys are getting to Well, 30. talk about this that's new a, test. I want to hear inter- about this. Oh, that's an interesting yeah. point. Uh, so it, it was, and I'm going to butcher this, so I'm, I'm sorry for anyone who knows the actual hard facts, but essentially what the, like the neurofibrillary tangles and the traumatic encephalop- encephalopathy sorry. I'm glad you said it <laughs> that, yeah. that, um, that came with blows to the head so that's what you and Junior say out yeah. when yeah. he shot himself in the right. chest he did it so his brain could be exhumed and right. they found exactly that right so mm-hmm. the correlation between you know like like dementia or Parkinson's or some of these like neurodegenerative depression, anger yeah not even, and then like going down the road into like alcoholism and substance abuse and stuff like that it's something that I actually saw in the NHL like maybe four or five years ago there was one summer that we lost four enforcers so it was uh, Rick Rippin uh, uh, Derek Bugard Wade Belak ah, I'm blanking on the on the fourth one but all guys that made a living just giving it and dishing it out when it comes to the fighting, like technically proficient enough to skate on the ice, but they were just chain monsters. The enforcers. Yeah, yeah, they they were they were self governance in the league. Whereas, like, listen, you got it was a cold war. It's like you got this guy, I got this guy. Yeah, you need that fuck guy. Around. And yeah. but when he was on the ice, it's like, oh, someone yeah. done. Someone's going up. down. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> but what yeah. is the testing? Is it imaging now? That they yeah, can image you know what? I don't. See? I think it's radioactive nucleotides that are binding to these neurofibrillary tangles. So, I mean, think. And this again, very rough. Because speaking. the bit, the hard part with CTE was that there was no way to see if someone had it in, in, unless you actually took the brain out yeah. 
and dissected it, so it was like this mysterious who has it, who doesn't have it type yeah. of thing. Uh, so yeah. what they're, I think they're doing is they can either inject or ingest uh, this radioactive nucleotide, which will bind to the, the tra- traumatized area of the brain that are mm. suffering from then this. Can, then you can image it, and then wow. you can see it picked So up. here's what I... So, is it like a dye that shows up? Yeah, exactly, okay. yeah, yeah. So if this, is, if this is really accurate, like they're saying that it is, because I read a little bit about it. I didn't read the whole article, but I read a little bit about it. Um, I think the, the sport that's going to be impacted the most is football. I really do because, yeah. and not because yeah. of pro football, but because the because look boxing, and you know because uh, of the signups with with kids, oh, kids yeah. oh, because you, because it's already going down. Nobody really signs their kids up for full contact boxing anymore. Yeah. It just doesn't yeah. happen anymore. unless you're poor. I, I mean, this is true. Like poor neighborhoods, you yep. see lots of kids yeah, boxing, which is why story, right, right? Which is why you see so many minorities succeed in boxing as pros yeah. because that's where they 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 learned as kids. So you don't. So that's not a big thing. But football still is a big thing that people enroll their kids in. Mm-hmm. And when they have this imaging, and they start showing it in kids who play football, yeah. that's uh, where you're going to have a problem. I think football has an easier pivot, though. I think football will have an easier time. Leather helmets. Boom. Yes. Nailed it. Like, look at rugby, right? Like, it's again, it's this idea of like self limiting behavior. It's Mm -hmm. just like having that guy on the bed. (laughs) Put a grenade on everybody's head. Well, that's why. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) I'll pull the bed. I'll do it. Uh, No, and I think that'll be an easier time where it's like you can't. You can't fundamentally change UFC to a point unless you totally change the discipline. Well, what you about know, like, like limiting the gloves? You know, or well, actually, they're already super yeah, limited, they're right? Super, like going because it's not just gloves, man. Yeah. You got elbows coming out. Exactly. You got elbows things. are worse. Fucking wet. You know what they're gonna yeah, do? Knee, right? right? Yeah. You know what they'll do? They'll turn it back into uh, old school Japanese uh, pancreas. Remember pancreas uh, tournament? So the the Japanese had the Brazilians and the Japanese were the ones that had MMA before anybody else. Yeah, and the Japanese had a version of it called they call it pancreas. Now pancreas is was full contact fighting in the ancient Olympics, so they used that name, but it wasn't the same in the Japanese version, which you can actually go on YouTube and watch some of these old fights. Like Ken Shamrock fought in it before he fought in the UFC. Uh, Frank Shamrock was a champion. Boss Rutten was a pancreas champion back in the day. And you could hit to the head, but you had to do open open palm. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, was oh, it, that's right. Uh, the, who was talking about that? Right. Uh, was it one of the one of the SoCal guys? You had him on the podcast. Um, does stuff with Rogan all the time. Wasn't he talking about that? I don't remember. Oh fuck, Brendan Schaub. Yes. Oh, uh, which by the way, unreal episode. Oh, thank one you. One of my favorite mind pump episodes. Cool, right? That guy it. was yeah. That he's was a great. You know, he's such a good I, podcast. I, I was really excited to interview him, and I know like we used to like speculate before. Uh, you know, the fighter and the kid, like it's part of their success. Why is it? Why are they so good? Oh, Brian Callen's a comedian. He's so funny. But when you meet Brendan Schaub, you realize like he is very talented. Him, he's very very talented. He's an incredible storyteller. So easy to interview. It's yeah, yeah. I can always tell when someone like. There's some people that like it's work. Like there's they're they're really challenging to interview. I, I felt like we I had a really hard time just recently with Dave Asprey. Like I, I throw these great questions that I feel like a good storyteller would just open up and tell us but so guarded, so many walls up. Like yeah. it's it's tough to break through. Brendan Schaub's like an open book and he's got a story for everything you ask yeah. him. Like that's makes for a very I, good I love being on the show because it's like if, do you remember uh, Inception? How it ends, Mm-mm. where like the dreidel spins and you don't know if you're in the present reality or not. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we go so many layers past an original question that I'm like, I don't even know where we started, but I'm just glad <laughs> we're here. <laughs> Yes. So like every time I leave here, there's just a dreidel spinning in my head. I feel like it started with one question. And I was like, "Did we answer?" But you that know first what? Question? But here's and this is but that's this how conversation. Yeah, no, I love it. I love yeah. it. I love well, it. Well, this was it. part of this it. was part of our formula that we realized really quick that people wanted was like, "I want a real conversation. I want to put this guy, this guy, and this guy, or this girl and these guys in a room together, and I want to hear what they would really talk yeah. about. And this is really what we would fucking talk and about. And that's one of my favorite yeah. questions that I, I'll sometimes pose to people, whether on the podcast or not. It's like if you could pick to have dinner with three people that are alive. Just get to, to think where they're seeking out their information from. Mm. I think that's that to me is like really telling of a person. It's like if you could spend time and talk to someone like unguarded, who would that be? Have you had some interesting ones or what? Have you had? Um, ones? Yeah, it's usually. I mean, you got like Hitler's always a one that's there. Oh wow! Which is like it kind of throws you for a loop. But then if you think about if the person's intelligent enough, I can kind of get it. If like he's got like a I don't know like a swastika tattooed on him, it's like <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I'm a little worried about your motivations. Um, you kind of the boilerplate stuff. I don't know. I'm, I'm never really blown away. But that's one that's made its way onto the list so many times that it really? when I stopped to think about it, I was like, who, who are your three? Oh, uh, uh, depends on the day. Today feels like a Seinfeld day. Uh, <laughs> Seinfeld would be there. Um, so dead or alive. Shit. Um, I like Jon Stewart. Really like Jon Stewart. Um, 
and I think just because I'm in like a like a media vein today. Uh, yeah. Um, huh. Any big athletes? Oh, 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 yeah. Thank you. Shit. Uh, Lance Armstrong. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. I would love to interview. 100%. We want him on the show. Yeah, you're you right. You know what, man? I freaking I go to. I was in, where was I? I was in Maui with my wife's extended family. So her father's brother and their kids. And there was some documentary on, um, this was like last year. It's like an old tape. And I went to bat for him in front of people I've never met who I'm going to have to spend the rest of my life around. And it's like, oh, I can't believe that. And it's like, to me, it's like, you know what, man, for the amount of people that are coming out in across all sports with drug use, how many, you know, uh, what, who are the big ones now? Uh, UFC, they got Diaz a oh, few yeah. times, right? Yeah. How many hundreds of million dollars did that guy raise for children's cancer? Yeah. Anyone? No? Crickets? All right, then shut up. Man. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, yeah. And the thing is, if you, did you watch Icarus? Yeah. 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 Holy man, yeah. that Great was insane. Great. And yeah. well, the one thing they highlighted was like, show me a failed drug test. Mm-hmm. Yep. Show me if he did 500. It's like, if you got to play the game, win the fucking game. And guess what? Well, yeah. What's that old saying going? You're, if you're, uh, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. That's it. Like, well, when they interviewed that Richard Pound guy, I said, is it possible to get an Olympic gold medal without drugs? And there was just like the longest pause yeah, that like, said hey, more than words hmm. ever could. And it's just like tough break. It's just a part of the, it's part of the training now. Yeah. It's well, just a part of it. Back to the football thing and why I, I don't know if we could go to the leather, leather <laughs> yeah. helmets or not, because yeah. I really feel like yeah, we, as, as soon as you see a freaking head fracture, we've, we've, they would totally not let them. Yeah. Oh, you well, get to change the style of that's tackle. Not, that's not why, because yeah. that's what would end up happening, yeah. right? Because obviously someone's head's not going to explode. It's They're going to stop. Carol style. But I feel like from a consumer, I mean, it's like what happened when we when baseball it's the decals. Remember, remember how we stopped watching baseball? It got yeah. really boring. No home runs or that. Which, by the way, let's talk about that. Okay, yeah. I'm going to switch gears <laughs> again because you're actually a guy I would love to you're talk about. Just for a second, we had Adam, a football. Yeah. Adam is a habitual I, gear changer. I, yeah. Well, have you? Well, I, it's not every day I get like another like person who's into sports in here that I get yeah, to like, yeah, talk yeah. about and we can get into like conspiracy I want to go back theories. to football, but oh, we'll goodness. go with you. Yeah, yeah, we'll go back okay. there, but I want to go into baseball right now because you are somebody I'd like to ask this question. I don't know how much you follow it or not, but did you know that this year they're they're about to surpass the the home run, the home run record year of of when the, all the steroids came out. Uh, like when Sammy Sosa and McGuire yes. were... I did not know that. Oh, I'm ex- not a huge follower of baseball, but it So there's an explosion me. right now on home runs. Now, is it is it particular people leading the charge or just numbers rising from the bottom up? All, everything. Okay, so there's not a couple of like the same... Right. Interesting. So Across the, the board. So yeah. They juice up the ball or what? That's, so the yeah. theory is that they're doing something with the ball. And my oh. theory is... So when they, when uh, when they first built Coors Field in Colorado, yeah. they were having a problem with too many home runs, partial and pressure of oxygen. So what they do is that in Colorado they have a humidor that they keep the balls in, keep them dense. Oh, yeah. So they keep the balls in, in in a humidor before the game starts, and then they play with them then. Deflate gate, right? Yeah, so yeah. that's been so that that was to calm the home runs down and make it an even playing field like the rest of the stadiums. So my theory is, if that was the case, then w- couldn't you do the reverse process, right? Overhydrate them, right? With like you mean dry the ball? Or, I mean dry dry yeah, dry, yeah, yeah. dry them all the way out, right? And then they would be hard as a rock and fly like crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess you look at batting percentages. Like, are they hitting the ball more often? Because that, I mean, if they're hitting the ball the same amount and it's going farther, then yeah, it's the ball. But if they're hitting the ball more often, dude, I think. No tropics, or let's take it a step out. Like yeah. maybe they're just everyone's on the Adderall train, mm. wow. right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Like if you're like Bart Simpson focusing on that point, it's, exactly. Yeah. Honestly, like I don't think so. Well, I mean, you want to double back to the original <laughs> question of this inception field of podcasting and podcasting culture. You know, there's guys that'll go the nootropic route or the psychedelic route. But like, let's just go straight methamphetamines, and let's just. I've, I swear, I've been in rooms with guys who are like, I mean, I've taken Adderall before for exams, and holy shit yeah. Yeah. and I've I've seen that in other people like the full on like well, so you know the Adderall stare here's yeah it's here's like, <laughs> this homie hasn't blinked in like three hours <laughs> why is, is no one seeing yeah. this yeah, 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 yeah. here's why I don't here's why I don't think it's the it's uh, Adderall and baseball or something like that because methamphetamine has been around a long time they've sure. been using them for a while well, remember yeah. Babe Ruth pointing out to left field yeah. you tell me he wasn't like coked out of his fucking mind <laughs> just like what is this yeah, guy who does doing? that rationally <laughs> who is that who is that one there was one pitcher in the 1970s, who took dropped a bunch of acid, oh, forgot he had a game. Oh my He's like, God. "Oh fuck, I got to play." Goes out and sh- and pitches a no uh, a no hitter. Unbelievable! I've never That's heard a true that. story, Doug. Maybe you can look he that up. For the Yankees. He yeah. pitched a no hitter on LSD. Look that up. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that's yeah. a real. That's a true story. I feel like I've heard which, that. Which which is like pitching a no hitter 
is already impressive. Yeah. Right, right. This guy deserves a trophy. You don't make law <laughs> from bad cases, I think, is a paradigm that should be applied there, where it's like, if you hear this and you're a pitcher, don't try it. <laughs> maybe, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe apply some sort of like internal logical consistency and yeah. don't like call your guy before your next game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, oh, there it is. Oh, you found it? Do- what's his name? That uh, was a video. Dak Al- Doc Ellis or something was his name? Oh, I don't know. was it Doc? Yeah, it was some black guy from the Mets. Doc Ellis. Yes, Doc Ellis. Yes, he hit a no hitter on acid. <laughs> Man, that really boosts sell- sales in the memoirs. I think good for good for him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, back to Justin wanting to go back to the football. Oh, the yeah. reason why I don't think it's it's going to go that way is because we've been so conditioned. I mean, let's be honest. The best part of what watching Indy 500 or watching football is the crashes, yeah. is the explosions, is the hits, yeah. is the oh, it's shit. the high risk, right? And people want to, they want to see that, and they want to see how people like, deal with it, right? But, why but, don't we all watch rugby? But that's yeah. not the, so. Well, I, that's what I was going to ask but, too. But with like how I honestly do feel like rugby will make more of a popular stamp because of all this controversy for a while, and like that's going to be an option that like you can get that physicality by going in that direction. What I think will steer the ship, like anything, is going to be the money. Right. If you start seeing Pepsi and, you know, Viagra and shit going over and dropping their money at the World Cup, then not putting it into then then yeah we're because you we're see vicious hits off. dude I so, mean I watched oh, the All what, Blacks yeah like, what about it's fucking shit. what about this awesome. southbound freeway yeah. what Fuck. about this I think where we're going with virtual and AI shit is that we are going to be able to make real soon here like if let's say I'm a, I'm a guy who's born now right and, and in 20 years I'm in the NFL now right and this is in the future. I, I worked my way through my ability to control my body, ver- like in a in a setting that's safe, like this, and then we see it virtually. So we see a bunch of avatars playing yes, football. Yes, the avatars, but it looks just like us because <laughs> we're already make we're already making fuck dolls that look like chicks that look r- real on point. I hate that you and might then, be right. Right. <laughs> and then it's you like Tech Mobile. Remember when Tech right. Mobile, like you, you you had the computer just play itself. So you could take it to the you could take it to the next level. And I mean, now we could see even bigger hits. Oh my God, that dude got killed. You know what I'm saying? Like he's out. He's out for the season. He got killed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, like, I mean, I hope to yeah. God. And that's it's funny because again, we're maybe double back to the main question. At some point, we got to we got to keep this on terra firma here. Like we got to keep like the amount of in podcasting culture, the amount of biometric stuff I'm seeing, mm. and like all this stuff with externalizing the human experience to computers, to data sources, to AI, and all that machine learning. It's like at some point we still got to be human fucking beings. Well, here. I don't see that in as entertaining. I don't know for, for me personally, but again, I'm not here. Two two points I want to make right. with that. Here's yeah. what with football, I'll make this point right here. I don't think this pro, be interesting. I don't think pro football is going to be impacted because people don't want to watch pro football players hurt each other. I think pro football will be impacted because when we realize, or if we realize, we don't know yet if they're hitting each other hard enough. If we realize that children are causing mild forms of CTE on themselves, football loses its feeder programs. The culture starts to change, and it won't happen overnight, but it'll happen over generations to where people will stop watching football because nobody wants to let their kids play. I thought they did a study on this already that the 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 force, the speed, and that that the kids are hitting each other at isn't enough to do. Uh, Who did the study? Bullshit. So, so here's 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 why I call bullshit because the imaging that you know we were just talking about didn't exist. So what Mm. they're doing is they're coming up with their bullshit calculations. I don't trust them. Now, I'm not saying that yeah. kids are causing damage. We don't know because kids run and fall all the time. Yeah. But if they show that, that's what could fuck up football. Now, as far as uh, you know, this you know, uh, th- this future of externalizing ourselves and this and that, I, it, for me, you know what that points to when people talk about that? It mm. points to humans' natural narcissistic thought process where we think we're so fucking awesome that we think we figured ourselves out. Yeah. Well, you haven't. Like, yeah. consciousness is still the greatest mystery of all time. Mm. And there's... I just posted an article today in the forum where scientists are observing quantum behavior in, you know, uh, what they call microtubules in the brain. So they're saying that maybe brain phenomena is actually happening on a quantum level. Well, good luck now trying to... Well, did you that. see the stuff about the, the computer they made? It was like these two bits... That they entered into a same ecosystem. They were both trained or programmed in a certain way that this was the resource you needed. And then they had their both their own sort of preset ecosystem and it was totally uh, analogous. It was one to one. And they introduced the other bit into it and they didn't teach it how to do it. 
But then the two bits sort of got conniving. They came out their own language. Their own language. Yeah, yeah. and they tried to about- stop the other one mm-hmm. from from getting to that resource. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so it's like maybe human nature like isn't exclusive to humans at all. Like, yeah. And that's kind of the scary part, because like everyone talks about AI. Yeah, no, or why would they be competitive? Like, What's yeah. the advantage there? Well, it's like how do they learn to be competitive when you taught yeah. them everything you think you know you can teach them? Huh. And it's just like that survival instinct, so oh, hardwired. Yeah. Crazy, yeah. especially with like AI, or like even people talk about like aliens. Like, well, if aliens can make it here, then they're better than us in the fact that they don't have this manifest destiny because that's a self-limiting human behavior. So they think it's like, well, what if, what if they did have that? Then we'd be <laughs> fucked, right? Like, because that's like Elon Musk will talk about that. Like, hmm. hey, be really careful of AI. Or like uh, Stephen Hawking, I think, yeah. has gone on record and be like, you guys don't know what you're messing with here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I think Microsoft did one where the AI, it went to Twitter to learn how to speak. And then by the time they came in for their morning coffee, it was like spitting out racial epithets. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. just like, <laughs> shut it down, shut it down. Maybe Twitter perhaps oh not God. the best medium for this thing to learn. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, you, on too many we could very well create artificial intelligence that through the process of achieving its own enlightenment goes through these stages of becoming this evil, hmm. murderous machine. Yeah. And then by the time it's like, oh, I'm enlightened now, and everybody's dead. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So who knows? But again, I think we're so narcissistic that we think we know what that looks like or what real or artificial can, Or yeah. that we can control it, right? What's, what, well, what self-awareness really looks like. Yeah. What do they call it? The, the Turing test where we, we ask a computer particular set of questions to determine whether or not it's really self-aware or if it's pretending yeah. to be self-aware. Like that's another question all in and of itself. Like how do you know it's really conscious? Yeah. Hey, what's uh, what's it been like over at Stanford? Um, I mean, right now it's a lot of meetings, a lot of just planning for the season. Really? Um, yeah, what's that we, look we, like? I mean, uh, Getting everyone on the same page uh, as far as like boots on the ground, plan for the season, off season, injury rates, stuff like that. What's your position there? Uh, head, strength and, head strength and conditioning coach for men's and women's rugby. Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, kind of in my purview or in my vein of thinking lately is, you know, because they don't, they don't honestly like looking at the injury rates, the concussions are not yeah. there. AC joints, ACL, stuff like that. Yeah. But I've seen somebody snap their fe- uh, their femur, but that was, ooh, yeah, that was yeah. bad. But, but, it's like, but it's like, yeah, it's there's more of a those, prosthetic for that. Yeah. You, there's no prosthetic for this. Your mind is way yeah. more, and, and that's and that's the thing that strikes me too um, with Stanford, especially is like these kids are smart, mm-hmm. like beyond smart, like and because if it's you're a valuable play, resource, yeah, and if if too like you know there's not the just in college sports like pro sports there's not the 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 lens on it there's not the um, microscope on rugby right Mm -hmm. so it's like if you're pursuing it you're also pursuing another thing like you can go to a d1 school get a communications degree do your four years through the ncaa and then knowing coming out the other end you'll go in the draft and you'll make a couple million dollars Mm -hmm. like that is a conscious business decision that a lot of these people make so they they get through with the required GPA necessary to pass, and it's like you, I'm sure even even at Stanford, the kids that are going through that are really smart. But if you're pursuing rugby in an institution like that, there's there's got to be some steel in the walls academically because it's like you're not going to because that's be, a, you're not going to come out the other side and make a million dollars. So is that what you're noticing? Is like uh, this is probably the smartest group of athletes you've probably ever been around? Oh, I mean, and that's that'll be across the board of anyone. Like I've worked in an administrative role at Stanford for two years, and just everyone is like a. Mm. Super, it's to the point where it's like I feel like if someone walked in and be like, all right, which one of these isn't like the other one? Be like him, that guy right there. <laughs> yeah. What is he doing here, imposter? No, yeah. it's it's just it's an insane. I like it because working in the Silicon Valley, have worked at um, I worked at Apple. Um, for a year before opening my private practice and seeing, and I don't want this to be come off like incendiary or anything like that, but the level that in, of entitlement that comes with holding down these positions at these institutions that are world renowned, mm. you know, you meet people from Facebook. It's like that statistic. They did people from Harvard, right? Like if 15 seconds of meeting someone at that has gone to Harvard, they'll have mentioned the fact that they have gone to Harvard where Stanford, I feel like is, is a little bit more, um, What's the word? Genuine, like the just the there's not really financial incentive to work at Stanford. Like they get it's the prestige that they're after. So you really get people who are passionate about what they do. So in the past, I'd worked with um, a lot of physicians, a lot of like members of the hospital and stuff like that. They if these guys went to Kaiser or went to like Sinai or went somewhere else, like 
they'd be making a killing. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they have access to all this money, and it's not going in their pocket, but they have access to the best facilities and the best education and the best people, they pursue it there because that's what they're passionate about. Is it about. true that Stanford and Apple are working together? I thought I heard- oh, yeah. I mean, everyone's in, every, I mean, Samsung's working with Apple, mm, right? Yeah. There, there's labs from Stanford that are in Apple, Apple labs that poach through the Stanford. I mean, engineering at Stanford, I think, is probably MIT and Stanford are probably one, two, depending on whether you're going like electrical or mechanical or CS or anything like that. Yeah. But it just, the, you identify, I mean, it's like anything, right? Like they're talking about either medicine or engineering or something, but it, they're passionate about it. Cause like if you're passionate about money, it's like, I don't, I can't really resonate with that, mm-hmm. but like they're actually passionate about the outcome, not the income. And it's like, that's I what I found when I, I've trained a lot of surgeons and cause I, yeah. my, my old gym used to be next to good Samaritan. Oh yeah. yeah. So Just out of like South Bascom there. Yeah. So I, so I used to train a lot of surgeons and doctors and when they come in and I work with them, I just, most of them didn't even drive like super nice cars. They no. drove like a regular Honda. One one of my guys who was a vascular surgeon, very successful, drove a Nissan uh, Pathfinder that had like 150,000 miles. They re- they just not into it, but they're super, yeah. super smart people, really passionate about what they do. And many of them volunteered every year. They would volunteer hours, uh, you know, like the, what are the Doctors Without Borders yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, overseas. So I just gained such a respect for people in, uh, you know, in, the, in that field yeah. because of that. Because I always thought of doctors as, now I've worked with plastic surgeons, a little different. Sure. Plastic surgeons tend to be a little bit different. I know yeah. it's a stereotype, but, but yeah, the, the surgeons I worked with are like that. Yeah, it just seems like, I mean, it's just altruistic. Like even in the technical field, their goal is to like improve humanity. Where I think some of these major companies in the Silicon Valley that people identify with, like how many people I saw when I worked at Apple that had Apple tattoos like, on them. Shut up. Oh, oh yeah, head. dude, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. And like I'm it's talking totally everything. To, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it is. <laughs> but I mean, that's, it and is. I don't want to. I don't want to pick on Apple probably because because they have a mean legal team. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, I mean everything from we like iTunes. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, hey. There Go. Shout out uh, Apple, Facebook, Google, and it's funny. Like we talked about, like sex of like you know you can tell the difference between an Instagram or a YouTuber or a podcaster. Yeah. I can tell the difference between someone that works at Cisco and someone that works at Facebook and someone that works at Google or well, someone that works at I Apple think or someone that works at Stanford. I think they're all building their own. You know, go back to conspiracy theories. I yeah. think they're all building their own ecosystems, their own. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. That's what we're what we're like watching happen right now here in the so yeah they're building these huge Have soon you seen the new spaceship dude yeah dude you know? right crazy mental right I wouldn't be surprised if one day I'm coming out it's of like, like the functional whole and it yeah, takes exactly, off exactly space, bro. exactly it's just <laughs> on, like I've been thinking that since day yeah, one yeah this is just, <laughs> I'm gonna be coming out of Whole Foods like oh, guess them? I wasn't on the ship <laughs> yeah no it's and well it, too like especially local in the area having Tesla that's scary Tesla and PayPal I've heard whispers that he's behind Bitcoin. So oh, I've, heard, I've heard that because they don't really know who, who created it. Let, yeah. Let's talk about cryptocurrency. I, I, so Fuck. I, okay. Let's talk I'm so about, I, okay. <laughs> so I so I bought right. So I'm I'm on the Litecoin train right now and looking at XRP because I I uh, before I thought that we were going to see these Facebook, Google, Apple, these communities, right? So hang in there and pay attention to where I'm going with this. There's going to be within Apple. There's going to be some of the best doctors in the world. There's going to be the best movie theaters, the best grocery stores. You're going to have all that within. And then on there, you can use Apple points to purchase all this stuff. Sure. And they get... How is that different than Apple Pay? You have you have the ten. I know you do because yes. yeah. you send me talking poo emojis now. <laughs> <laughs> but like when, how easy Their is the best feature? Apple Pay? The single best Dude, feature. I blew so much money the last three weeks since I got the phone. Yeah. It's fucking insane how easy it is. Yeah. It's, it's too easy. It's developing new currency. Yeah. Right? Yes. Because it's like now because Venmo is PayPal. Right. Right. Yeah. That's that's yeah. But those subsidiary. are still dollars. Yeah, you're but still using it's, dollars. it's the for first. Now. Yes, it's the first step yeah. to a a better, more efficient, and the dollar is just continually to decline. So I'm reading like uh, I'm reading a good book right now called "The Bankruptcy of Our Nation," and it just gets. Oh, in. you're in my house now. Oh, bro, I, I love, love this shit. shit. So, <laughs> well, and if you look at history and like all other fiat money uh, over the. Oh no! Don't start talking like that, bro. You're gonna make me go off, dude. Go, let's <laughs> I go. Can let's see, like the Illuminati, like bro, triangle. Coming I am. Out well, of, you got to explain I'm, what a fiat currency is, right? Yeah, so it's do. it's yeah, it's based off of it's based off of. You, it's not backed, right? So if you can't back it by gold, you can't back it by something. So it's basically, right. it's not. Yeah, it, the U.S. It's, it's fake, made it's, up. It's a fake value. Yeah, yeah. the dollar well, is it's paper. Backed by the, it's backed by the the government. It's backed by our military. 
it, it's yeah. actually it's what actually trust. actually what really backs us what really backs the US dollar now is the petrodollar is the fact that mm. all oil the major OPEC nations the OPEC nations of the world will only sell their oil for US dollars which is what protects our dollar if they were to drop that and start you know using other currencies or start using gold or stuff like that our the dollar would be would collapse which is which is there's a lot of conspiracy theories as to why like we went into Libya which you know we hated Libya for a long time but it wasn't until they decided to you know to start creating their own gold backed securities that we went in there and fucked them up or how JFK was going to create have the US you know government mint its own you know money that was you know silver uh, and not the Federal Reserve, and then he got popped, and all these. You could go down the rabbit hole with this kind of shit. Well, cryptocurrencies, oh, yeah. in my opinion, is it has to be, and we're seeing the evolution of it. Like with, like you're saying, Apple Pay, it's becoming to the point. And, and if you looked at the evolution of money, right, we started off with like tangible things that we would trade, like gold, right? Like a, if I wanted to go buy something of a lot of value, I'd carry all this gold and give it to person. Well, that became ridiculous after a while, right? So it's like, okay, so now we come up with coins, and then the coins go turn into paper money. So now when I want to buy something that's worth $10,000, it's just a little tiny little stack so I can carry that's more. So what's the next evolution to that is not having to carry anything being completely safe and protected like cryptocurrency and be able to say like you and I be talking right now and be like, Hey, I like those shoes. Oh, I like those shoes too. I'll give you, I'll give you 50 Bitcoins for that. Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Look at your phone. Boom. Done. Now give me your shoes. Well, then that's, that's the problem is every time you take a, you move a deviation away from that, the gold standard money becomes less valuable to people mm. as far as like think of a casino that's why you walk in and get chips because it's like oh yeah fuck i don't need this plastic thing i've never seen this before Doop, there you go yeah i'll throw a thousand on black or whatever mm. where it's like every time you now we're deviating towards that it's like if it wasn't so easy to be like i don't i kind of like sal's shoes better if i wanted <laughs> sal's shoes i'd be like he's got the black socks on today i want everyone to <laughs> yeah. everyone, everyone to hear that yeah, i'm rocking all, white yeah, 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 what you doing? <laughs> um, but it's like I wouldn't think to pull out my wallet and give Sal and have some sort of bartering system. But if I just had to go on my phone, be like, hey, Sal, here's, size here, 12. Here's the deal with cryptocurrencies. The, the deal is the reason why, first and foremost, we don't know what created them. There's, it's, a, it's an algorithm that will never inflate because it always produces less and less Bitcoins as it goes along. Uh, the reason why it became popular, let's be honest, is because you could purchase things with Bitcoins in ways where they cannot trace you. Yeah. So yeah. people. So if you go to the dark web or where people are buying like the uh, what was it the, the what was that website that got shut down? Silk Road. Silk Road. Yeah. People buy drugs and stuff with. Uh, so was, it, was there a lot of laundering of money I know a through A lot Bitcoin? of guys that have bought drugs with cash. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But true. not online. Sure. That's the way. Yeah. Now, now people are doing. That's like, not true. Yes, you do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean. So, uh, yeah. So online, online, it is very difficult to trace or track somebody who uses a cryptocurrency versus using dollars or money. Yeah. Now here's the thing though. It's moving to I how are you how are you not I can't believe you're not all the way on the train because to me it's what's moving us back into like a free market. Well no hold on. Well, how do hold they maintain second. the scarcity of it? Hold on well hold there, on there, there's a way to do that. Yeah, so Bitcoin I've heard about there's the only twenty there's, you can't create. There's, only, there's only tw you yes you can. You kiss you can if you don't create more there's twenty two million Bitcoins available. So it will have a ceiling in it. So and if it does go where it's going Speculate on the value of one single. Yeah, they'll coin. Go, no, they'll go down into fractions, and you'll buy. You'll end up using like a, a you know one right, tenth of right, a coin. right, exactly. Right. But um, imagine right. somebody right now to invest in one of those like so major major cryptocurrencies right now. If you just per, like I, I've urged people that listen, if you got three four hundred bucks to throw at a Litecoin or one of these ones that are only three or four hundred for a single one, throw, buy one, buy one, and hold on to it because the if this goes where it's going to go. The fact that there'd be only 22 million in circulation means that, and we will create the value of it as, and are there more than 22 millionaires, 100 here's, millionaires here's, out there? Absolutely. Here's that my problem. Here's, I'd give a million dollars to have here's one. Here's my problem with Bitcoin. Right now, people buying it, most people are hoarding it. Hmm. So people who are buying it and investing- yeah, they're not it, even like doing commerce They're, they're hoarding well, it. No, there's been houses that have been purchased with really? Bitcoin. There now. have, there have, but hold wow. on a second. Right now you see a lot of hoarding. That's gotta be just recently. It could very well, and a lot of people speculate that it was created by governments to track illegal transactions. So you think I can't be tracked online buying I've shit with this? I've heard that conspiracy, right? yeah. But besides that, besides that, right now a lot of people are buying it at, to speculate on it, not to buy it as a currency and they're sitting on it. Right. Which means- the value of it has been inflated like crazy, so you got to be careful. I, I, I. Oh, what I think is there's going to be there's going to be 
50 of them, 100 of them, different cryptocurrencies. It's blockchain is the technology. Cryptocurrency is just like a, it's, right, like, it's right. another type of using it. So I think like, let's say for example- You'll have competing currencies. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Let's say uh, Amazon decides to accept, which there's rumors yeah. around Amazon accepting Bitcoin. So Amazon starts to accept, that becomes their cryptocurrency. Well, then Apple decides to partner with, you know, Litecoin or someone. And there, there's going to be, I think, 100 of them and they all create and well, we'll- Have you heard about that one that actually you trade gold, so it still has a bit of a gold I standard have, feel? Yeah. But like it's, your you gold, like gold is kept somewhere. Yes. Yeah, I have heard about that. You can actually Black trade Smith with through e-commerce. You yeah. can trade the gold. The rights to time. the gold is in a vault. Yeah. So you have a tangible thing at the it's end. It's like going back yeah. to the old days. That's how blacksmith. I was. like that yeah. idea just because like you can always go get it. Sorry. You know, yeah. it's like a tangible thing that still exists, which I think people are always afraid of just having nothing but like you know, numbers. Yeah. I just think it's the natural progression of what we've seen for so, for so many years. We can we've seen this natural evolution of like how why is current Currency changed over the last, you know, hundred plus year. Over, you know, why why is it changed like that in the first That's place? That's going to disrupt governments. Yeah, because if money world, is money which, is trust, currency yeah. is trust, right? And I know some of the kids that you know they smoke way too much dope, stay way up way too late on YouTube. <laughs> they have bought into this, and if these fucking guys uh, end up getting power because they bought a lot of Bitcoin, the world is in. Oh so no! The very oh, fact no. that like you know Bezos. There's That's when we want that. Uh, AI to come in and clean. Yeah, the house. exactly. Yeah. But it's like the fact that Bezos is thinking about. Like, or rumors that Bitcoin, good, good. We need them to have money because they're smart people. I trust that they are going to make the right, if they get some financial ancillary kickback in doing so, and he's, you see, he was like the first guy to break a hundred bill, a couple of like, like last yeah, month. It's the, big, it's the big race to the, the yeah. to be a trillionaire, right? That's the big race. Is that what it is? Yeah, the Apple, big race. Apple's really close. It's the big Do race between rem- the four. Who, uh, so the four being? Facebook, Facebook. Google, Apple, Apple, and uh, Amazon. Amazon. Oh, crazy! I got, I got, a, I got a quote for yeah, you. Right the trillion you. cash I got, is the race right now. I got a quote for you. Give me control of a nation's money, and I care not who makes its laws. That was Rothschild, who who said that quote years ago, decades yeah. ago. This is, or excuse me, uh, you know, over two centuries ago, or, or I think in seventeen hundreds. The the people who are going to freak out the most over this kind of stuff are these major, like Federal Reserve. Yeah, like these huge central banking. Central banking is one of the ha, has performed some of the worst evils of yep. all time, yep. and they're the ones that stand to lose the most with something like this. But that's so the way everything's expect, going. Expect if this shit actually yeah, starts be, to threaten, there'll be a war over. It. It's not threatening anything right now because when it does, you better believe some shit's going to go down. And it's not going to be pretty. Well, either that or what you'll see is when you start, and that's when you better be racing to the bank to be getting some, getting on it yourself, is when the banks start investing in it. When the banks actually yeah. start taking their money and going, we better hedge our bets here mm-hmm. and buy up some of this shit so we're not we're not standing their hand, you know, with our fucking, our dicks in our hand. <laughs> well, yeah, that's what kind of happened with the, yeah. when they were hedging their bets on the, on the, um, uh, the real estate thing the, when that crashed right. in 2000, 2008. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's I think it's very interesting. I think when you look at history, you know, we didn't even talk about like all the all the other failed currencies, all the other all the other countries and nations that had had currencies. Yeah, currencies will fail eventually. Right. All of them do. Yeah. It's so it's it's literally it's not a matter of the collapse will. of the dollar is some economists inevitable say, is one of the is the biggest threat to the sovereignty of our nation yeah. is the collapse of the yeah. dollar. Well, I mean, everything is moving decentralized. Like, like the Whole Foods is, or even like fucking Chipotle. Like when they got in, sh- like you know, they're dishing out salmonella burritos for like <laughs> a year. But I think, and if correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure what they were attempting to do was they were attempting to locally source for a chain across the country. So they weren't doing the due diligence on quality assurance because they just couldn't manage the logistics of, you know, going to each one of these farms, but they were attempting to locally source their produce and their meat from local to that particular franchise. So it's like a fairly noble pursuit that kind of felt flat for a little bit. Although I still go to Chipotle if I'm hungry, <laughs> but I I'll think deal with the diarrhea. decentralizing, decentralizing and like, which is weird. Cause I still remember being in the sixth grade and we have class. I don't know. You guys have social studies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, social studies, and we talked about globalization and like how crazy globalization. And to see that in my lifetime, as mm-hmm. short as it's been, pretty much almost be totally like everything, reverted. everything, anything, and everything that can be decentralized is becoming decentralized. Yeah. 100%. Which is why I feel like you would think m- would agree more with the crypto. Oh no, no, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing. I think the future is in competing currencies. It has to be. Right. I'm just saying right, who, right now what you're seeing with Bitcoin is a lot of fervor, a lot of uh, 
a lot of people speculating, and I see a major crash. Okay, yeah. so why coming I, before? Why I think I, I see a correction. Is what I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. it does have the signs of something that exists in a bubble. Well, mm-hmm. and and this is why too, though, because right and what you're seeing right now. So Bitcoin has become like the um, uh, Kleenex of blowing your nose, right? Tissue saying. paper. I get what you're saying. Yeah. So it doesn't mean it's the best. Mm. And it's not it's not the best, and that's what it's why the most these, known. Yes, it's the yeah, most popular, it's, the most well known because it's got the most publicity. But there's already other cryptocurrencies that are coming up that are become that are showing that they have less errors, that they're it's more efficient, it's e- and that's where so it's really like trying to bet on the right horse. Yeah, that's going to get picked up by something like Amazon or someone huge <laughs> like that. And right now there's all this speculation around Bitcoin be, being accepted by Amazon, but the reality may be it may be a, a cr- cryptocurrency none of us even heard of, or they may get the the blockchain technology themselves and create it for all we fucking know. I don't know, but I'm very fascinated in cryptocurrency and I think it's around the corner for us sooner than we think. And I know it's weird to say it, but this whole like iPhone X experience for me has really got my brain spinning around that way because I'm not kidding. Like, because yeah, the immediate transaction, yes, that's something you have to yeah. pay attention to. Well, right. you can't, right. you, you can't stop the decentralization. That's how, you just can't. There's nothing you could do to stop it. I mean, they try to. Net neutrality was a good idea, like right for them to try and slow down or stop. You know this fucking See explosion this of- thing on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Are you what a dumbass. The hypocrisy of that was yeah. That's what Sal, Sal did a post yeah. on that. Like, oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, he did a post on, the, on our, our forum, right? They're you trying said? to get their hands on stopping this decentralizing effect. They're trying to get their hands on being able to regulate things. But the problem is, is that legislators can't legislate as faster than the technology can advance. They just can't do it. Yeah. So even if net neutrality was still a thing, even if the government was regulating all these phone lines, and now they can, now they have their hand on the controls. Technology is going to come out with another way to deliver the internet. Well, it's the motivation yep. to progress is always going to be greater. Like, look at drugs and sports. There'll always be drugs in the Olympics. As <laughs> yeah. long as yeah. the motivation of someone, like that study, oh, fuck, I forget what it's called, but it's like, if you ask 90% yeah, or 95%. Yeah, they all say I would. Yeah, dead you within were five die, years. Yeah, that's right, I saw if that. If you gave you Olympic gold, like if you could win, take something that'll kill you in five I think five that was years. on Icarus. I think that was in Icarus. Oh, was it? I think it was okay. in Icarus where they talked about, I saw the same, or yeah. I, I read the same study. They said if, they, if, if you ask somebody, that this would kill you if yeah. you get gold medal, but it's going to kill you in five years. Absolutely, it was like crazy. Yes, like almost ridiculous. all of them said yes. Yeah, and it's like that's the same mindset of human nature that's just being applied in a different arena again, where it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, the motivation of someone to be liberated away from centralized governments and from regulation and to be able to buy. And again, it's like you know, I'm not going to go buy a kidney off some with Bitcoin. I could, mm-hmm. and it's nice to think that if I need it someday, I think that's the only way you can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's like. I, don't think you can use I just I just think that like the 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 big brother mentality is is it's been around for so long that it's on its way out and people are just clawing to the last grips of control. But yeah. it's once that switches over, once the money goes, everything goes. Yeah, they're scrambling. Well, I just think what's to stop a company like Apple, who gets all the things that I said, where you have the best doctors, the mm. best of everything. What is to stop them from saying, okay, let's say the average salary of an Apple employee right now, let's just say for argument's sake, is $150,000 a year. What is to stop Apple by devaluing the dollar themselves by saying, nobody makes more than $50,000 a year, but we're going to scale you up through Apple points. And it makes total sense for you mm. as, a, as an employee to take 200,000 Apple points because if that is if you can use those Apple points to go to the doctor, to go to the grocery store, to go to the movies, to go at, do your yeah. internet, if they've created a little world like that. Well, that's how they'll skirt around the laws. They'll make sure they pay you minimum wage, but right. then everything else is, yeah. is Apple points. And, it, I, you know, it's funny. It's good. I mean, it's going to be crazy, but and, I'll, I'll, I'll take it a step further. I'll take it a step further. I don't think the future is going to have major super powerful corporations either. I don't. I think companies like Apple, Google, uh, you know, you name it, Facebook, whatever. I think these companies, when patent, when patents has become obsolete, excuse me, when patents become obsolete, which they will be at some point soon, it's going to be obsolete to patent something because there's going to be technology for people to just replicate it on their own. Yeah. You're, you're going to see major decentralization of Wealth as well. That's like the last remaining bureaucracy. Is, that's it. That's it. That's it. When people, when I can copy your music, I can copy your movies, I can copy your clothes, I can copy your technology, just because I have the technology to do that. Now, 
who's gonna hold who's gonna have all the money who's gonna make you know billions or trillions of dollars it's gonna be I, very different well at that point you, we might as well all be robots because that all the things you mentioned required creativity which is something that's so unique to like the human experience that it's like well fuck I don't want to live in that world anyways you might as well just pull a 38 to my head right now no. and because it it's like fuck <laughs> that man I, I think I think we're I think I, we'll be more creative. I think you're gonna see I think you're gonna see both It'll free up time to be both creative. kind of worlds existing and I think that Facebook, Facebook will provide its own ecosystem, and just like you're seeing, like the, the there's gonna be you're, wars. You're already, you yeah. been on campus at Facebook. I don't think it. No, no I haven't, dude. Been it's like Disney World. Yeah. They're already doing this, right? Like wow. with like yeah. corporate housing and stuff. It's like they're already trying to keep it with. They're gonna the have wall. their own armies. So yeah. <laughs> and I don't, and I don't think it's gonna be like that. I don't think it'll be like, but I, I think it'll be tribal, tribal to the point where it's like my camp's better than your camp. But I don't think it'll be causing wars or fights. It'd be like, no. listen, if you want to come join our group, you can come join our group. If you want to be in your group, you can join. Your group. Well, yeah, but I mean, think of how many people, and this is a very Silicon Valley centric conversation because mm -hmm. I mean, I drive past Google to get to my office. I've worked in the confines of Apple and I currently work in the confines of Stanford and there are bubbles within bubbles within bubbles. And it's like, that's all well and good for this, like the, the geographical radius of the South Bay. But right. what about the people that don't work? Like, what about the Midwest? Right. What about the heavily armed people who might not be getting the call to go <laughs> on the spaceship? And this is why I think they'll be still. <laughs> wow. You know, yeah, but how are they going to sect or how are they going to feel when there's like this utopian society on the other end of this shiny gate? And that's the thing. It's like when you create that level of disparity, whether it's a government that's doing it, whether that's an institution that's doing it, those you don't want to be the people with that. Like you don't want to be the people with that's that if situation. that's if you have uh, tyranny and oppression. But if if companies do it operate in a market where they and they do succeed because they're serving the consumer, everybody benefits. Right. So you go through some of these like we're in Silicon Valley, but you drive through the Midwest. Everybody has an iPhone. Everybody's true. You know, on tech yeah. and stuff like that. So. I don't think that's as big of a I honestly think the decent decentralization is going to get to the point where you're not going to have, you know, people who have tons and tons and tons of money. Look at music. If you look at music right now, it's hard now yeah. to be a, to make a shit ton of money in music because yeah. people buy individual songs. But it's songs already changing, and, like, and uh, it was interesting listening to Billy Corgan talk about this, like the, the shift of it, everything going now to streaming. It's like it's now – what happened was a lot of the, the, the big record companies, they, they sort of hedged their bets, and so what they did to get around it was to buy a lot of the equity into these streaming businesses. So they still have a hand in it yeah. uh, with their artists, but you know now it's finally like it's, it's making money on that and so more people are into the streaming, you know, for for the monthly dues mm -hmm. where they're actually making profit again. You for know the consumer, it's better. Yeah, for the consumer's way better. It is, right. and you know how the artist guys, is getting fucked. You know how artists are making money now? Concerts. Yeah, old school. Yeah, they had to go back like they did back in the day. They're making their money off of concerts now. Yeah. Well, movies, much? movies are going that way. I look at. I I was at the movies the other day. I was watching Star Wars. And two of the commercials, Netflix the, probably. One was Netflix, and one was Amazon Prime. Right. No way. Yeah, mm -hmm. dude, for for a movie well, that they're making. So, and this yeah. is why why mm -hmm. it's good that the net neutrality thing got shot down too, because real soon here, and this, I just I was telling Katrina this because uh, she was asking all about it, like, well, why is that so good? It's not well. Think of it this way: real soon here, Amazon, Netflix, we're going to be able to be sitting at home, and the new Will Smith Netflix come out, and instead of me having to go down to the theater for five ninety nine. I could stream it right to my house, it's all right? gonna be like and that. I get to see I get to see a blockbuster movie get delivered to my bedroom yeah. with instantaneously. Do you not? I mean, I can buy shit on Amazon, and in the holidays, I have like I've literally sat in Valley Fair trying to get a fucking parking spot the past two weeks, and in oh, waiting man. for a spot, went on Amazon, bought the shit I was gonna buy in the fucking mall, <laughs> like, I'm and went home. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like, yeah. don't you worry about like the lot? I mean, you guys, social interaction is the business, right? But it's like. I like going places and talking to people. Yeah. And it's, I find even as, you know, everyone's buried in their phones all the time, even going out and trying to interact with people who are in that digital space mm -hmm. is making it harder for me to even want to go out. And then it's like this compounding cycle. I think of people, like, I think people still want to mm -hmm. do that. I think mm -hmm. people want to do that, but I think it's going to change. Well, I, I think, think you're going to see showrooms. You're going to go to Amazon showroom. You're going to go to, yeah. you know, and, and it's going to be different. Experience. I think we're in the middle of seeing the pendulum swing right now. And, and it's, it's not all the way to the edge yet. And so that's why we all kind of feel this way. Cause I agree with you, but I also think this is why I tell people like, if you want to invest in something right now, invest in the fucking massage places, the meditation places, the yoga places, all the, because those places you're going to, they've been around forever. That's been around for thousands of years, all that shit, right? The folk tank didn't just come around, but why are we seeing it on the rise right now? It's because people are starting to realize like human connection being detached from all these electronics and being connect being present is going to become important again but 
what do all these things that you just listed, I'll list off a few more, have in common now is that they carry with it a social capital, right? Ice cream museum in San Francisco. Have you seen pictures of no. people at this? Oh, it's basically create physical space so you can share your experience online. What? Like, oh yeah. Well, I mean, explain it's, this. Okay, no, I mean, it's explain a, yourself. It's, it's kind of it, the ice cream museum is a is something that I've just seen a lot. Where it's like this thing doesn't need to exist. I can buy fucking ice cream everywhere, but they have this. It's like twenty five bucks to enter or something like that. I haven't gone because I, I feel. I'm just diametrically opposed to the entire idea behind it because I see the forest for the trees. I see exactly what they're doing. They're creating, I mean, every room, there's like, I don't know how many rooms, but like you get ice cream and you walk around. It's like, yeah, sure. I can just go to the ice cream store and get that. But no, at the ice cream museum, there's like very colorful rooms and it's basically made for every room to be an Instagram friendly picture taking experience so you can help oh, bolster wow. your social capital oh, that wow. it's like you are only you're literally living your life Feed for your the gram. social currency exactly but i mean how how is that any <laughs> so now here you have a self-perpetuating marketing model based purely off the fact that you've woven in a bolstering social so you capital. think you're going to see that in those mm. types of businesses i think it's i think i'm spending my nights how to like days and nights trying to figure out how to do that with my own businesses is how to like you know think of like the red carpet events where like people have no like, no you're right we we've already talked about that here i mean one wow. of the things that we wanted to do was we're going to make a wall for like when a guest like yourself comes yeah. in and you get like a shirt yeah. and then you get to pick up pictures for your instagram and that's and like, a gyms you, are a classic example of that right yeah. like we i've culture cast zoo's right. got the big zoo thing it's like oh i took a picture of the zoo thing or it's like think of cities right like i take a picture with like the bull with the big testicles or like the giant yeah. silver bean in chicago it's like right. these landmark places that exist so you can only go to share them with your friends yeah, online. Like I was really there. Yeah, exactly. Like, Whoa. It, and yeah, but it's to me, it's such a, it's, it's so people don't realize that that's what they're getting hooked into. That, yeah. But like, do, you got to tell me how you think that's going to tie into a massage clinic or a float tank. The clinic. ones that are going to do, well, that's the thing. I didn't start hearing about these float tank things until like the people I followed went down this road and started doing it. So like, you know, the, the float tanks, they light up and they're blue or they're, right. this one's green and they're in a room with like bamboo. So he's saying instead of going there to unplug, you're going there and you're plugging to in. To plug in, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's, but that's the brilliance of it. And like that's – I really hmm. – I, I relish in in the experience of being in places where there's no identifying criteria yeah. that I could take a picture and it's just me in a place. Like people don't know what you're doing. Well, I mean I always double back. I mean I'm very gym-centric. My life <laughs> is like I live and work inside of many a gym um, Just and now just fucking started working in another – open an office in another gym. And – so I look at very much the Instagram culture as it, you know, it's it's my business, it's part of my life, it's lifting culture, it's all that. And like one thing that really started to irk me was like these very Insta famous gyms like Barbell Brigade and nothing against Barbell Brigade. I think it's an awesome facility. Barquan's a wicked, he's really put together something special. And it wasn't until I visited that I realized that, but it's a massive, the whole wall says the name of the gym mm -hmm. where I train. There's an orange squat rack, and if you squat, that's where you squat in. There's not a single thing that says, but it's the work that's been done in that orange squat rack that might as well be the best graffiti spray. And that's what I like things to be known for, where it's like, hmm. give me tangibles. Don't just give me like, oh, look how cool this looks. Look how cool this looks at the fucking ice cream museum or whatever. It's like, you're not doing anything. You're just you're just petty dick slapping and you're putting money into the pockets of the people who conjured up this. And I think with that specific example, that was a very much a conscious choice. Like, all right, this is, they're in a war room. This is what we're going to do. Yep. It's like literally like, it's how you lure children places. Totally. Ice cream. We are getting the back of my windowless van. Oh, oh my God. I take a picture and put it on Instagram and tell everyone how awesome my windowless van is. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, it's a really, when you sit down and you think you about the inundation. Animal. Yeah. With this, the inundation of technology into your life and how much it affects you, whether like consciously or like subliminally, it's like, fuck, you lose sleep at night over it. You know, I, really I want to believe in humanity more. I want to believe that we're, we're smarter. I, right now we're, I feel like a lot of people are being duped by, you know, the social media and being able to put this facade on yeah. and, and, and drawing people that way. But I like to think that when, when we see ourselves becoming so connected, so for example, like we have a short memory, dude. That's I, the problem. I, I have caught myself in the last three years since we have now built a business that obviously thrives off of social media platforms, and, and without it, we would probably be dead. 
I have now watched myself go from being a guy who didn't give two shits about Facebook, didn't do any of that stuff, never was on it, never ever was on it, yeah. to I actually have to monitor myself on how much I can consume of it. And and at what point is it, am I doing work? And then what point am I starting to consume, right? And they, I brought up before that they, they say the next, uh, the new, the new uh, sc- the scrolling is the new smoking, where you- I fucking hate that. Right? Can we stop comparing shit to smoking? <laughs> like the sitting is the new smoking thing. Right, right, like, right, right. Break. But no, I get it. Yeah, but the point is that w- what happens is you, you just get caught up and you don't realize, you know, you start off, you try it one time, then you have two, then you have three, the next thing you are, you're a chain smoker. And that's the, the idea, the comparison of it is that you start off justifying it because you need to do it for business reasons. The next thing you know, you're, you're so plugged in, you can't even get away from your phone for more than four or five hours in the day. Yeah. And how unhealthy is that? And then I like to think that when, right now, a lot of people aren't putting that together because there's not a lot of people talking about it because we're all talking about how great all this technology is. Yeah. But I think there, that pendulum will swing also. And I think people will start to realize it and realize, okay, this whole facade of the ice cream museum and the go to the float tank and take pictures and stuff like that, maybe that's what's happening right now. But in the future, I think people realize like if you want it to actually make an impact on your life and actually truly do what it's supposed to do, which is get you become more present, yeah. then you're going to have to disconnect. So I, I don't know. I want to believe that eventually it will go that way. Well, it's what technology is a, a good tool, but a better master. Mm. Right. That's kind of the the end game there. It's mm. I don't know. It's uh, yeah, like you said, it's inevitable. But I think the big thing with the scrolling is being able to, <laughs> to check yourself like and look at something before you post it and be like, is that what I want to sound like versus is that what I sound like? Yeah. Right. The, the, the auto correct and the edits you can make to like your, your perceived, um, intention in the world where it's like, it's when the rubber hits the road and you're face to face with someone and you got like, you're in a job interview or you're on a date or you're saying something and you can't like text like, ah, no, like, should I send the eggplant emoji? Eh, maybe it's not, it's not the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where it's like, I don't Next know. It's time. just, it's just the dissonance between who you are online and who you are in person. Yeah. I, I think what, it's two different people. For it most is. People. It yeah. is. I, I had a lot of, uh, you know, this was tough for me when I first started Instagram, I was doing a lot of what I knew would get traction. And for me, that was being in the men's physique world and taking these pictures of myself, you know, shirtless in the mirror and doing all stuff to, and I remember that I built a pretty large following with that and I became this guy and I, and I do not identify with bodybuilders. That's not because I did it. doesn't mean that I identify with it. I did it because I saw the opportunity yeah. for me to gain all this traction. So I had a really hard time kind of breaking free of that. Like that's not just me. But even now, like you're, you're, I mean, orders of magnitude more successful now because I mean that put your foot in the door, but the fact that now you pursue a passion and something that is in line with one-to-one with what you want to mm-hmm. do now then you're seeing real success right. in my opinion and I, I think agree. a lot of people they get a taste and whether they're doing the men's physique and a lot of people do a lot of things for the gram right or for youtube or whatever and it's like until you that aligns with what your real passion is i don't think you'll ever be successful i agree yeah and i, I think a lot of people just float around you know the popular pages of the people that have you know a couple tens of thousands or hundred thousand followers on instagram oh I, like, I i think otherwise you become like the one hit wonder right sure yeah you, that's a good way to look at yeah it. you explode you give i mean we we, we've already done interviews and met people that have got like millions of followers. And I think like, and they, and they did it around like one way and for example, and, and not knocking, uh, um, zoo culture or, uh, what he, what he's done over there. Yeah. But I, he has definitely attached himself as this guy who does all this crazy stuff. And it's like, you're, I'm expecting every time I tune into my Instagram that he's going to do something cool. Like he's yeah. going to flip a car over. He's going to do a squad on a fucking bicycle, tricycle thing. Like I'm yeah. looking for, um, you, it, you'd now become almost like your typecast. A, yeah. A yeah. slave to your audience or else your business doesn't thrive. Like that's yeah. scary, you know, for, yeah. And I think that's the nice thing about this podcast is how many people thought then when they're going to tune into this episode, and they're going to see my name and they're not going to think that we're going to talk we're bit- about <laughs> Bitcoin and fucking like we barely touched yeah. any biomechanic stuff right. at all. And right. I think when you can become more than the sound bites that exist of you online, I think mm. that's when you gain like a real presence because you're a real person. Yeah. You're not just beholden to the image you've put out unless the image you've put out. There's layers. There's, exactly. you know, people have depth and I, th- I feel like, I, I hate that. I hate that when we only, per- like we only portray this one sort of surface image of ourselves. Yeah. It's like, come on, dude, people are way more complex than that. You'd like to think so. Yeah, well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, or people. even not, like say the, you know, I think there's a, I, fuck, I'm probably pulling this from Ferris. Damn it. <laughs> Where it's like, you want to appeal and whether you do this consciously or not, I think successful people like your podcast it comes to mind more so than probably any other is 
appeal to 10% of your audience that make that be your focus. Whether again, it's you're sitting down in a war room and you're consciously making this decision that this episode is going to be like this and this is the topic we're going to go and we're going to cover fermented foods and all the people that are into the nutrition are going to like it and then next week we'll make mm-hmm. a hard switch into the training or then we'll do like a funny episode where it's like you guys just flow and the stuff comes out and you catch the 10% inadvertently because of that 10%, those people, that's their mantra. That's their guiding light. They don't really, and like you said, you'd like to think maybe people have some more depth that maybe they don't, Mm. but maybe they just want to hear. And then you guys can introduce them to the fringes and every 10 episodes or so you'll come back to the fermented foods. You'll come back to the training. We're Mm -hmm. trying to build a brand Mm -hmm. based on us just talking about what we want to talk about. And the reason why we want to do that is because we can do that forever. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not going to yeah. fuck yeah, ourselves this year. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean? Hood, now, now that you've been podcasting, you're in fucking three different facilities. You're at Stanford. You're all over the place. Do you even have very much time to, to tune into any podcast? Are you still what, what podcast? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I commute a lot. I, you guys are you guys are on the top. I I QA our own podcast. So I'll listen to our stuff. Um, Malcolm Gladwell is revisionist history. I probably listened to top to bottom. Oh, I'm just cool. a huge fan. Yeah. I just his mm-hmm. storytelling is is sec- just his way of connecting the dots. I've never listened to that. Podcast. Oh, oh, it's, it's really a it's just from the quality to the 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 choreography of the whole thing. He's he's one of my favorite writers. Um, yeah, no, I haven't traveled in a fair bit, so I've been listening to a lot. Uh, I mean, I'll tune into Rogan depending on the guests. It gets a little meh, um, you know. Psychedelic psilocybin, whatever. I you kind of heard it once. <laughs> yeah. I kind of feel like that's what a lot of those that whole that whole group of guys are all kind of talking about: jujitsu and fucking psychedelics. Yeah. It's yeah. like uh, I don't know, I'm which I like to talk about that. Sure. I do. I, I it's interesting to yeah. me, but I feel like there, there's more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, who do I listen to? I'll just go like, I, I mean, I like to keep it in the fitness space, and just to see the contrast of what's out there. Like, I mean, Greenfield. I'll listen to a B pack. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll tune into ben, the muscle left where one gets, I mean, that's, that scratches a nerd itch in me, mm-hmm. just like mm. hearing different, uh, like approaches. Um, I'm trying to think, yeah, those are probably the top ones right now. If you really want to go, uh, information heavy, you could try, um, found my fitness, uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick. Uh, Patrick. Yeah. Uh, okay. She goes mm-hmm. deep. Yeah, yeah. I've heard her on a couple of podcasts. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you want to, if yeah, you want to challenge your vocabulary heavy. and stuff like that, and you just what you're looking for, I feel like it. She's so smoke and mirrors. No, 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 no. no, no. She's the shit. Like I like she's her. She's deep, bro. She's a scientist. Yeah. Like, she talks. But like, it's she's like talking if to a you, group of you, right for me book. for podcasting, like I, I, I just like you said, like I want to be entertained somewhat, yeah. or I want to enjoy the conversation yeah. just for the conversation sure. purposes. That's why I said if you're if it's deep, oh, if you yeah. want to learn, and then I want to yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I feel, I feel maybe if I was like in school at that time, going through like a degree in the related field, I would eat her her podcast up because I just want to be consuming info. But it's like. Yeah, it's, I don't oh, know. You know what? I think the wife's been listening to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember driving up from SoCal like last month, and that's exactly what it was. Oh, uh, Jug Life, Chad Wesley Smith. Mm. Uh, I think him and Max A to do a pretty good job. Very, uh, very, cool. very fitness centric, mm. um, but entertaining nonetheless. And I, I think our episode comes out like next month. So shameless plug. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes out. I like I even put that one in. Just kind of here. Let me not so subtly <laughs> just drop that in there. But no, that's what's pretty good. I mean, I like to keep it kind of in the powerlifting space to keep my finger on the pulse of things. What yeah. are you? What are you? Um, what are you learning yourself like through this whole process? I mean, I, I love getting a chance to talk to you because I get to talk to you before you started. Now you're doing it. And I think you do a great job. I also think you're an intelligent guy who gives good information. You got good guests now. What are you? What are you learning about the business? Um. It's different, man. It's really like, it's just the range. You just realize like how insignificant the fitness space is, I think. how it, I mean, it should be significant to everyone because it's, I mean, it's the foundation and fundamentals of people that are leading the charge as far as becoming healthy, find better ways to get healthy. But um, it's just so insignificant in the grand scheme of things when you look at the podcasts that are rising to the top. I mean, look at it this way. Like if you went fishing, you'd put a worm on a hook, but if you were trying to catch me, you'd be better off with like a donut or like a protein shake or something. <laughs> and I think that's walking a fine line of where you're willing to go as far as being palatable to a broader audience, but also staying true to your own value what set. A great point. Um, mm-hmm. so that to me has been just interesting, but also too, like not being limited. Like we did one with Brett Contreras and me and Brett have had like Insta knife fights online. Yes. Like I, I there's yeah. there's video evidence of me, and it's going up on our YouTube channel. Um, I don't know when, whenever I put it up. Uh, there's video evidence of me doing a hip thrust with Brett Contreras. 
Which, uh, but like you meet him and you talk to him and you put the swords away. He closed you. <laughs> yeah, honestly. He's like, like, all right, all right, all right. But it's like, I do think just, and it was like, I don't know, I was hard headed. I was honestly, and I still am to some extent resentful of people who, in my opinion, who, and I'm not saying that this is Brett at all, but people who were successful in the fitness industry who like, you know, they were just selling protein shakes online or whatever, like who didn't have the steel in the walls. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like this guy's making this much on his YouTube channel. Like here I went to school like an asshole, like, and you know, you try and be a jack of all trades. And there's one guy that has like a catchphrase that makes a lot of money. And it's like, just put your swords away. And that's the one thing I've kind of learned is like, if you just kind of approach people and be a little bit more open-minded like that, Brett, I was a little worried. He's not small. Yeah, He's like yeah. six, four. Oh, he's wow. like a pretty imposing a guy. Point. And I was like, man, maybe this guy's just going to like invite me to his glute lab. And like, we're just going <laughs> to duke it out. But like super inviting, super friendly, super, our pod, like it was a little bit more on the nerdy side of things. And I slam you. Yeah. I right? just booty clap yeah. me. Um, and I like tested him on a few things. Like I called out one of his research articles that I thought was flawed and we like had it out, but it was very professional. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. So I think just that allowing for like a free and open discussion between people that oppo- like with opposing viewpoints and it's okay to disagree with yes, people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, right. And I think, I think a lot of people, once ego gets involved, it's like, you know, we've had some video evidence this morning of what happens so when great. ego gets involved. And it's like, listen, it's, you know, everyone present their case and then it's, then it's Darwinism. Like, let's see what rises to the top. That's and right. that's what I really like about podcasting is it's, what my favorite thing in sports of all time is when Michael Tyson used to come out for his title fights. You know what he used to wear? Hmm. He used to take the hotel towel and cut a hole. Oh, that's it. right. And he yeah. put it under his neck. The head reduced head essence of that, like you get Pacquiao and Mayweather and these flashy kids and the Conor McGregor mm-hmm. with the fuck you pinstripes. And it's like, you look across the ring and you see that guy coming at you and just, just rips the fucking towel and puts it over his head. It's not like the Mexican flag and he's not <laughs> trying to be like insane because he knows like this guy just said he's going to eat your fucking children. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> like, and I just love yeah. that like and podcasting that reduced essence of the conversation where it's real. It's just, <laughs> it's archived. And I think there, imagine in history, like if we had this ability to oh, archive dude. conversations because we've been listening. I mean, the, this is to me, this is tantamount to like the the Gutenberg printing press. Oh yeah, where it's like you're seeing the ability to have these conversations between these people, whether it's you know they're within the same echo chamber, or they oppose each other. Like, just imagine being a fly on the wall to some of like the great, and you just get third hand documentations of things that have been written. But even just being able to audibly hear it, I think mm-hmm. to me is really interesting, and that's why I've gravitated. I haven't listened to. I mean, I don't even know what my radio presets are anymore because all since I've Mm -hmm. been introduced to this, all I do is listen to podcasts. It's growing. Yeah, it's growing very quickly. It's it's a good thing. Yeah, no, for sure. Super exciting. Fuck man. yeah, man. Thanks Dude, for coming on. Yeah, yeah. always a pleasure always, having you always. in here, man. No, yeah. I love yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're always an easy a pleasure. Guest, for Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> Check it out. Go to YouTube. We should have some new videos up soon, actually, with uh, Dr. Yeah, Jordan Chow. Yeah, yeah, we just shot oh, some good yeah. videos with him, too. Uh, Mind Pump TV, subscribe to that channel, or Jordan's going to come to your house and punch your face. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big guy. Watch out. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.